Okay, friends and neighbors, DK here at Mr. V Amps, and we have a custom 250. I um, have no idea if this works or not. I did plug a sacrificial speaker into it, but I have not plugged into electricity because it's a push button power switch, so I don't know if it's on or off, so I didn't plug it in yet. I, I figure we want to do this together, so if it explodes spectacularly, we catch it on film. So, anyway, controls, we've got a volume, bass, select tone, whatever that is, one, two, three position, treble knob that says pull for bright, but uh, I try to pull it and it doesn't pull. So, yeah. Um, channel two, volume, bass, middle, treble, and another pull for bright, and again, that one doesn't pull either. So, uh, maybe they're just kind of corroded into place. All right, over here we have a reverb, intensity and tone for reverb, and then we have tremolo, speed, and vibrato. Vibrato might be kind of cool. I believe this is geared up as a guitar amp. This is probably a custom 250, like, I don't know what model they would call this, like maybe A1 or B2 or something. They usually have some kind of designation. I didn't look. But we got a speaker plugged into it. Um, let's just plug it in, switch it on, and see if it does anything horrific. Okay, I've plugged it into electricity, and there is power in the socket, and it did not turn on. So let's push the on button. And it seems to have gone click. Yeah, so it went click. I don't know if that's supposed to light up or not. Our speaker cone jumped a little bit at on, and it jumps a little bit at off, so it's trying to something. Alright, let's get a power lead, or a lead, just a quarter inch cable. And let's see if it wants to produce any sound or noise. Okay, that would be yes. Yeah, bass definitely works. Select a tone seems to work. And treble seems to do something, so... That channel works surprisingly well. Why does that pull for bright not work? I don't know. Let's come down here. Definitely a lot more noise on this channel. Okay, and now I got... Oh. Okay, so channel one is giving me airplane noise. Now. I think that, I think it's the ground on this plug is not good. That's okay. Okay, so channel two, bass seems to work. Middle seems to work. Trouble seems to work, but those pull for brights don't. Let's see if we have any reverb. Let's bring up intensity. I don't hear any reverb. Sounds like a pong game. suspect they don't see any reverb. Tremolo, yeah, there's tremolo. Okay. That's cool. And there is a vibrato. So there's tremolo, which is volume, and there's vibrato, which is kind of more of a pitch bend. Okay, so that's cool. So our problem seems to be with lack of reverb. Okay, so why do we have no reverb? And why do those switches not pull for bright? Okay, well, we're off to a better start than we could have been. This amp was found online on one of those sites. Um, not Craigslist, but you know, you know the usuals, let go, offer up, all those, and that's where this came from. And the gent had some things to sell, and I had some 
will to buy because the prices were very very competitive so I felt like we could take the risk and have a little bit of fun here on the channel I don't see that this polarity switch doesn't really feel good I don't know that it's working it might be broken uh, if we three prong cord this we're really not going to need it but I, I think that this is supposed to light up so I'd like to see that light up if that's possible all right let's pull the chassis and take a look well this is an interesting finding we got the uh, box out of the shell and it has a lid so it'll be a little more unscrewing to do here um, it looks like we got some Phillips and some flathead so I'm sure some of these screws might not be original but I'm not too worried about that they seem to you know be okay maybe this one doesn't fit in so good but we we'll need to get this lid off I don't know man these screws don't want to come out uh, why did I do this with my life okay so in the case of the screws this lid originally had these um, grommets or catches or whatever for the screws to go into um, and some of them are missing so I'll have to see what we can do about that this lid obviously has a dent in it but it does have a schematic in there which is kind of hard to read and tiny but we can use our magnifier panel if we need this is a custom 250 model 2 okay that's helpful I think and there's our reverb tank of of doom um, a little bit different layout than the customs I was used to from before because we worked on some earlier you know um, 60s eras this is a 70s era but uh, things look okay in there it doesn't look like it's going to be too bonkers um, other than our big giant electrolytic capacitors it looks like we've got the usual suspects of tantalums we've got the typical spaceship silicon transistors which don't fail quite as frequently and do those switches light up can't tell that they do hmm lock and switch interesting uh, we'll have a look around let's let's first just see if I can make it hum and buzz from the reverb tanks little input outputs that sounds like a good idea okay so I've got it on um, let's just turn up the reverb intensity really high and just bang on the tank okay So that actually works, that part works, so it is, you can hear the tank. Okay, so we've determined that the return on the tank is okay, but it would seem like the, the send to the tank was the problem, am I right? Let's see, let's try this again. I can hear the reverb tank if I tap on it, but it doesn't look like it's getting a send. So, which side is which? I don't know. Let's just give that a wiggle. And this side, I'd like to reach down there and give that a wiggle, but that's a little too close to the voltage, so we'll come over here. Which, granted, there's high voltage over here, so don't put your finger on that thing. Don't do what I'm doing, kids. It's stupid. Yeah, so the pickup on the reverb tank is definitely working, but the send on the reverb tank is not. Okay. 
and we have this pull for bright that doesn't pull for bright. Which do we want to go with first? Hmm. I think I'd like to figure out which one of these connectors is the reverb return. Let's see if is that the return or is that the send? This one is the return. And then this one would be the send. So that's not sending. So if we know that's not sending. So there's no send here. So let's see if it's connection. Let's turn the amp back off. We'll unplug it, but um, well, I don't really need to unplug it to do this operation. Let's just see if there's continuity or resistance of some sort on that reverb tank. Uh, let's put the meter somewhere where y'all can see it and where it can fall inside of the amplifier. Because, you know, having it a good way for y'all to look at it is more important for them to actually be safe or smart or something like that. Because, you know, this is, this is not the educational channel. This is the idiot works on an amplifier channel. Okay, so even at no, whoa, 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 okay, hold on. For a moment there at 20, I have some, I seem to be getting continuity here. I didn't have any, and then I did. Is that my fingers that's measuring? Is it measuring my fingers? No. I got continuity, but it was real, real brief. You all saw the meter jump. Is there just a lot of corrosion and crapola on this? Okay, yeah. So, let's see, homage here. Two. Let's see, this is on 2K. It's pretty, 170, 180. So, this may be like 180 ohm input. That's so that. The tank is more than likely okay so we probably want to look at the drive which looks like it might be one of these transistors you got one of these metal capped looking germanium looking things here that's never as encouraging as some of the silicon ones those tend to be a little more encouraging because they're more likely to be indestructible Little Max Pro contact cleaner on that. Jam that back in the socket and give it a little crank in there. And let's see if it magically works now. You can certainly hear it. Let's give it a little input. Nope, 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 nope. Doesn't look like it's sending. Okay, so we still have to address that issue. It's weird that the pots are actually quiet, but this pull for bright seems really frozen. So I'd like to maybe address that. We'll get the uh, Max Pro electrical lubricant in there and see if that can free that up a little bit. All right, we'll move you in here. We'll try to do this in real time because I haven't done squat except walk around and go get the bottle of cleaner slash electrical lubricant if you actually read the description of this stuff it sounds very much like that very expensive product that most technicians swear by at least on paper and it seems to do a fantastic job so this is the knob that won't play ball with us you can see it's got a push-pull switch on it so, let's just feed it some sauce, see if it... I think I left the amp on. Oops, well, it's off now. Okay. So we're cranking and we're cranking and we're cranking. I don't know if any lubricant got into the shaft, but this should be a pull. And if I give it a pull, 
the shaft should want to pop out and it should, you know, activate the switch. And instead it just pulled right off the friggin' the knob just pulled right off the thing because it's a push-pull on knob. So this push-pull business still ain't working. Is it because it's really corroded? Yeah. Try to get some juice down in the shaft. That feels really stiff and nasty. Crunchy. Which is weird because, I mean, you'd think the pot would be rattly and noisy and it's, it's really not. Hmm. Boy, that pot is crunchy. It's, and it seems like it's just got like a rusty shaft and it's difficult to turn without the knob so let's just put the pliers on it. We're not gonna, we're going to attempt to not destroy it people. We're just going to turn it a lot and since I've got a little bit of slippery lubricant on it now it's a little trickier to turn by hand anyway. Let's give that a wiggle. That's moving a lot better, at least I think. Let's see if it wants to pull. Oop, oop, it's thinking about pulling now. Okay, it pulls out a little bit now. Let's pull it out halfway and give it a little wiggle. Maybe we can get this to loosen up. should pull in and out pretty easily. There's still doesn't want to play ball. This stuff is kind of like penetrating oil. It seems to really seep into things. So I'm actually going to try to See if I can get it down into the switch portion down there. See if that will help my cause. Because it says pull for bright, and I want to pull it for bright. And just think if this works, I'll have to go do it again. Yippee. It doesn't want to play ball. Oh my goodness. And I've dealt with these push-pull kind of pots before and I've never had one that was this stuck. Good grief. Alright, see you in a few. Okay, so this just goes to prove that I'm not completely normal. Any normal human being would have eventually just said, you know what, that pot's too far jammed and I'm not messing with it. But I messed with it. This I took it apart and this sort of shaped shaft is supposed to slide in this plastic wiper assembly here and uh, well it didn't so I disassembled the pot and I pried these apart and then I've been scraping all the corroded crap off of here and then we're gonna get a little bit of uh, grease in there and then we're gonna put it all back together but I actually had to disassemble these pots to get them to work lucky me Okay, so here's our repaired first board, and I suppose it's probably good that it's out because it'll just aid in cleaning anyway. But now I can not only turn the treble pot, but I can also push-pull it, finally. Yay, and the switch still works, so we are able to fix that without busting the crap out of that. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to clean these other ones while I'm here. Um, and then place this board aside and then we're going to pull the second board and kind of do the same shebang to it because that uh, these push-pull pots man that uh, plastic corroded to the metal shaft uh, that's what happens when you don't use 
your push-pull function on your amplifier since Ronald Reagan was elected president. Okay, so welcome to day two. Um, I put the preamp boards back in and I kind of cleaned this half of the face because now we're over playing with the reverb and we're going to do a little bit of work on this side. But I wanted to see if the reverb tank was alive and because obviously the pickup from it works and if I rap on it I get some reverb. Not a lot, but some. And so I put my little piddly the signet, uh, sine wave generator. Now granted this can drive a speaker at like a whisper level. I mean it's very very weak. But driving, I can drive enough signal here to actually get it to pass through. So I'm going into the input of the reverb tank and there's enough weeble wobble on the springs to be picked up. So I think that tells me the tank is still alive. Um, yeah, so the tank's still alive. We need to figure out why it's not really getting much drive signal. Well, if there ever, if there's ever any uh, doubt that I'm a airhead, okay, I've just got a modest amount of gain here, you know, I'm feeding a signal in enough that it doesn't distort, and, you know, that's just my signal generator. Woo! Uh, this is the, and of course this goes along with the gain, so the more you gain it up, the more drive you're going to get. But I mean, with this even at a moderate level, I've got six volts peak to peak here. So plus three, minus three, so that's what, about two and a half, three, but that should be enough for this reverb tank. That, that if the reverb tank is seeing that and not reacting, there's something definitely wrong with it. So, yeah. That little, that blue capacitor is the last step right before it goes to that output jack there, which I have the RCA unplugged. So in. after realizing that the reverb tank had a good input signal, I think there's your problem. Or is even the other set of springs. They're not even in here. Great. <sighs> I don't think I have this exact reverb tank, but I got one that's pretty close. Trust me kids, it looks worse than it is. It's kind of a brass coating and this was put in one of those vinyl bags and then nailed to something that was stored in the garage. Because inside She's still pretty nice, and I'm pretty sure this one worked. Let's just plug it in and see if it does. Okay, so, yeah, we got her hooked up, and I got the volume at half, and... It's really reverberating. That sounds fine. So... This tank will probably work just fine. Now it's just a matter of mounting it, which will be a fun kind of adventure in itself. Okay, kids. So it's been a couple days since we filmed anything on this custom, and I got to remember where we were at with it. The polarity switch here, the plastic had cracked, so I glued that. The death cap went to ground over dirt a chassis over here so that's been removed I did do the three prong cord uh, put that there just bought a black extension cord and chopped the end off the only thing I'm still waiting on are the itty bitty light bulbs that go in there as soon as we get those this puppy's done Okay, so here's our custom 200 with all of the repairs on it completed. The input 1 is the brighter of the two inputs, where input 2 is the fuller of the two.
middle down at the bottom. because I converted this to a three prong power cord but it lights up so that looks cool and uh, other than that it is all repaired and ready to move on to the next owner thanks for watching <laughs>